How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Just trying to make it through the day. Are you warmed up at all? What's the weather like? Oh, it's uh, it's like five Fahrenheit. Nice, wonderful. Nice. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah. No, just uh, working really hard there. It's good. It's uh, you know, as we said, that's that's the number one thing that has to be done. Kind of like just taking everything else out of my mind, you know. I mean, it's I am. Yeah, go ahead. That makes me happy to hear. Um, I, I hope you feel accomplished. <laughs> accomplished. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's good. It's in the, tr in the middle of it, and we're in the trenches right now. Uh, it is somewhat lonely because, uh, uh, you know, I'd love to have a team and all of that happening, but I think that's the thing that's going to happen once we get the education and programs going and all that. Right now, it's product and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but it's good. It's good, I'd say. Um, good. Yeah. Well, I haven't yeah. received confirmation from Brian. Oh, you anyways. haven't? He literally just popped in. Okay, cool. Be curious to know where he is. Here we go. Connecting to audio. So the siding went up? In the process, uh, started, I went back inside since it was so freezing, so I started working on the interior panels. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, slowly but surely it's getting there. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot to mention, I heard from the Habitat for Humanity uh, Virginia yep. office. Uh, so I'm gonna set up a meeting with them as well. Ah, Brian. Hello. Hello. Hey. Thanks so much for doing Hi, this. Brian. I know it's kind of out of the blue. Yeah, no problem. Happy to uh, happy to chat. Yeah, I looked at your project a little bit, and it's super interesting to me. So I'm I'm uh, I'm happy to hear. I'm interested in hearing more about it. Cool. Uh, Martin, do you mind if I give him like lay the groundwork and then let you two take it away? Is that cool? Sure. Sure. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm like more on the planning strategy side and I set this up initially because I'm familiar with Ty Tyler Cowan and the Emerging Ventures program and that's how we came across you. Mm -hmm. uh, read your blog, love it. Um, curious to know how well you think the Seed Eco Home addresses some of the challenges you bring up uh, with innovation. And uh, just happy to connect you to Marchin, who is the brains behind this whole thing and the founder of OSE. And, you know, Marchin can probably clarify, but like, I think our focus, I think success today is sort of stress test our ideas about the seed eco home and mm -hmm. what it can mean for labor and construction. And to get your sense on, uh, is this a good fit for the EV program or any advice that you have in the application? So I'll just pause there, and uh, if you have any questions, great. If sure. not, Martin, take it away. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, excellent. Well, thanks, Brian, for for sharing your time. Yeah. So, um, do you have any questions offhand that that come up about a project? Do you want me to tr just try to lay it, lay down what we're trying to do? In this. Just yeah, if you want to go ahead and lay down, I will. Can I will? Yeah, I um, I actually just realized I had your email open. And I looked at the open source ecology stuff, but I did not actually see the home design stuff. So I just went back through it and have now found it. The seed home. Is that what you're referring to? So yeah, I'm CD looking home through that right. I, yeah, I'm I'm looking through that right now. So I'm I'm not as on top of it as I thought I was. Uh, apologies. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we design and build open source industrial machines, publish the plans on the internet. So the CD Home is kind of a culmination of what where we're trying to get over the last decade, uh, say mm -hmm. since the TED talk in 2011, just doing a lot of prototyping and continuing continuing development to prove the concepts that things can be built with industrial productivity on a small scale. I think the number one thing that mm -hmm. we have going for us, I would say, would be the swarm build methods. That, that's a big deal. 
uh, but basically also the integrated design process. So up to mm -hmm. LOD 500 detail on the full CAD and free CAD, et cetera. But one thing we've developed, maybe like one milestone is the swarm build. So for example, the house I'm in right now, <clears throat> that's a thousand, four, uh, 1,400 square feet. That's the CD go home one. Now we're on version two, but that was built with 50 people in five days. So we, we run these mm -hmm. uh, swarm build events that try to address the, the labor issue that like we design for absolute radical simplicity as much as we can to enable mm -hmm. anybody to build it. So, so say now, I mean, now one of the challenges is labor, like uh, as we develop and deploy this house, we're aiming to finish the CD go home to like February. Um, but at, the idea right now is use that as a bootstrap funding model to cro cross subsidize all the other open source development that we do. So basically get one business that's robust enough to, to bootstrap other things. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at the CD go home as, as that. So, but at the same time, we're doing things like using our tractor, like micro tractor, the open source machine to do the digging and things like that. So, uh, and then also big deal about cost reduction for us would be using waste plastic to do some 3d prints of structural well first non-structural then structural materials on a larger scale like up to the entire wall panels which are four by eight foot modules so we do this modular design on one side mm -hmm. we simplify the design so that uh our goal is to train builders for integrated builders it's basically cross all the trades like yeah all that no i think so you, i think that makes it a ton of sense yeah, so that you integrate completely the design build process like nobody else does. Because I found out recently that architects don't really design houses, that they kind of do house concepts and then everyone else just builds out from there. And there's a huge disconnect. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's really interesting. And especially kind of depending on how complex your building is, like the more you go down in the level of complexity, the more it is up to the contractor to basically figure it out and you basically assume that they will know how to do what you're doing. And with something like home construction, which is so much a function of just trade skill and just on top of, on top of that with the IRC, which is so, so prescriptive, you can, you know, a single family home doesn't even need an architect, right? You can just have a really, really skeleton set of plans um, that gets built. Yeah. It does. It needs to show. It does not need to show anything <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And then the more complicated your building gets, the less that's true, and the more you need to specify every little thing. Um, but yeah. Um, our, yeah. It's. it's uh, yeah. It's. It's. It's less specific, specification than you might otherwise think. Yeah, and that's that's part of the deal for us. It's to close that chain to to absolute efficiency. So the way we design, way we design things are intend to be the easiest to build and most efficient and therefore grab the efficiencies of um, good design. I mean, good design that's designed mm -hmm. for build and, and so forth. And also designed for modularity, designed for expansion. So actually like in the first, uh, if you're looking at the seed home too, I put, put the link in the chat there. So, so you're in the same yeah. page. I mean, I'm, in the, model, I'm in the design guide now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in there it's, um, idea is uh, also design it for scalability modularity and that like right now we've got this one colonial style kind of model but you can make all kinds of configurations using mm -hmm. we work with four by eight building panels so somewhat like sips but human mm -hmm. scale mm -hmm. and uh, trying to reduce the skill set required to make it most easy. So right now we're setting up a training program and the builders are intended to do everything. So everything from foundation to roof and HVAC, plumbing, electrical, because we're just trying to simplify the systems as much as we can and make it efficient. Like, for example, a utility channel where you can run all the wires pretty much right after uh, not going through studs, like just a channel which allows you to do that super easy. Uh, so mm -hmm. thinking about the modularity, which is a key to, to the possibility of yeah. rapid build. So, yeah. And then the main question, like in terms of enterprise rollout is like right now we know we can do this, these kinds of builds. I mean, it actually would take 2.6 days if you count the number of hours with a 24 person team. So we're designing around a 24 person team. And that's what we're actually trying to do for the first build. That's going to be like mid this year. Um, but mm -hmm. um, 
the question there is going to be inspection schedules because like for example we found in kc the practice may be that you you're waiting up to three days for each inspection which means that we'd we'd um, have to spend a few weeks on this but ideally we do very rapid these swarm builds that therefore are low cost and efficient so that's that's kind of what we're trying to do there with the house um mm -hmm. the other technology like we've built 3d printers we actually sell 3d printers uh we built and sold compressed earth block presses tractors uh like the compressed earth block press that's actually going to be for after we get this one out in stick frame we're going to go mm -hmm. go to compressed earth block because we've also seen that you can do super efficient construction using compressed earth blocks we've done most mm -hmm. of the buildings on this site with compressed earth blocks and also working out the techniques to make that very efficient with the last step being soil conditioning equipment like the mixer and pulverizers <clears throat> to get high quality block um that's going to mm -hmm. be like later on but right now we're just doing a simple stick frame i understand that the cbs i mean that's that's ultimate but it's much harder it's it's more labor but i think we can also work it out like after we deploy this and get cash flows then we can move on to cbs which are much harder once again using completely open source machines so that's yeah that's kind of a summary where we're at cool okay i have a lot of questions <laughs> um yeah. so uh so is the um is the idea that you're going to have basically design documentation and fabrication drawings or whatever you know whatever it needs to feed into your fabrication equipment g-code whatever is for basically every component or what so you yeah. say lod 500 but basically everything yeah um so, Everything. Okay, and so I guess, yeah, the next, so I guess the next question, and maybe this is, is obvious, I just missed miss it, is the idea to just basically have one model that you kind of repeat over, over and over again, or is there going to be more flexibility in the, um, in the, uh, in the, in the design? You can have like multiple models or customization, or is it some, you know, something between those two? How you, what, how are you thinking about that, I guess? It's a, it's a complete, construction set so while mm -hmm. right now rosebud model the colonial style one is the one we're developing fully like okay here's a very mm -hmm. explicit product but then after that uh the if you look at take a look at this link which i'm pasting in these are mm -hmm. the all the different permutations so what you see there that's a rosebud as far as possible mm. shape. But basically, it's a construction set. So start with four by eight modules and then go on to think about 16 by 16 living units, and then you can reconfigure them. One story, two story, different geometries, et cetera. So row house, colonial house, one story, whatever, whatever you got to do. But right now, the rosebud is, is one model that we're just, um, that's the focus. Okay. That's what we're so doing right have... now. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, everybody always uses the same the same metaphor, but the Lego yeah. blocks or whatever that you're building are kind of maybe roughly uh, room sized, or is there, are you thinking kind yeah. of smaller than that or larger than that? Well, it's actually four by eight for the wall modules or four by nine. Uh -huh. um, so building from that. So think of okay, you've got your. Um, let me share my screen here. Actually, show you some uh john sure i guess i yeah i guess my question you know a wall that has electrical lines running through it is different than has plumbing lines running through it is different than has exterior that needs insulation and stuff like that so i guess i'm i'm trying to think what are like the repeatable uh, units um just because that's going to affect you know, how much design effort you need to put in and, and stuff like that the repeatable units are are the walls um walls but like if you have a wall we, we have we built like when we build it in there, we have the electrical plumbed in. So we have the utility channel where you make interconnects. Um, mm -hmm. There's interior walls, exterior walls, there's door modules, window modules. And we, we build those uh, so you can build on site or off site. So we can like right now, for example, we did the workshop where we built the rosebud model and then we took mm -hmm. it all apart. So actually we have this pile of modules right now that we can mm -hmm. actually use for the first build. but um, that's the idea. And, and if you talk about specifics, like, okay, so in the kitchen, like if you look at the floor plan for the kitchen bathroom, there's a utility module, which has got like all the water and like the plumbing is inside mm -hmm. of it. 
so that when we mm -hmm. build it out, it's like it's almost like plug and play. It's it's really like a mix between like complete like modules mm -hmm. and where um, you have flexibility to to modify as needed because it's not like it, we're not having robots build these. Yeah. At this point, and, it's and like just, you have yeah. flexibility. And yeah, and you always end up with, with something like that in, in my experience. Um, yeah, so I was just kind of wondering how you were how you were thinking about it. Um, I'm looking at a wall panel. Um, yeah, design now. Um, so I guess another question is, what is the kind of business model you you were thinking about? So one business model is, is we train people. We run a construction business and mm -hmm. build. Uh, I would say in a in a full implementation, like basically a solopreneur business where you've got your crew of 24. So that's, that I would say is the module base module in this specific instance. And then you're building mm -hmm. probably like 10 houses a year with, I mean, 10 houses easily, but I mean, if it takes 2.6 days, mm -hmm. we probably allow for like two weeks or four weeks per house. But mm -hmm. if we have that many people, we would be working like, uh, the idea there is probably four at a time. So build four at a time. Sure. So you're doing four times uh, 10 at least, four times 10 or 20. So 40 to 80 mm -hmm. houses per year. Mm -hmm. And then the model is 50K in materials. It's 50K in labor. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's essentially it. So the thousand square feet, it's effectively like 100K plus your land and utilities connections. Yeah. Um, that's one. That's okay, one. So, the so other so thing the, is, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, the other, other is do the same. Like if you want to build it all yourself, yeah, here's the kit. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the other model. Okay. So at. I guess to summarize it, it's, you basically have this, this kit essentially that you, you, it's, you know, it's open source. You, you offer it more or less for free and you're offer also try, offering building services where somebody hires you to build their house and you build that for them. And then you also train people in this system where it, I don't know if you specifically thought of like a franchise, but you treat, you train, you train somebody else how to do it and then they can go set up their own business. Yeah, we, the same house. Try, try. Is that, is that, do I have that roughly right? Roughly right. That's two training models. One is apprentices, people who are actually getting into it and doing mm -hmm. a six, more like what we're setting up with John is a two-year apprenticeship program where you learn the complete system. The other thing is mm -hmm. the franchise, the open franchise replication for entrepreneurs who want to do that and who mm -hmm. are already got some experience managing or building and they want to up their game to a, a good enterprise. So that we train people freely um, not freely, not for free, but we the, the business model is open. So we share everything regarding the business model. All the no technical know-how is open, plus the business know-how mm -hmm. is open. So we're, with the intent of solving housing, whatever that means. Uh, but but the part, of, <laughs> part <Yeah>. of it that, <laughs> that we're trying to do, and part reaching out to you is, okay, well, let's get everyone around. So now let, let's say we kill off the technology. The technology is open. The collaboration is open. Now what we can do? Because that's the that's the point we're trying to address is uh, opening up collaboration, uh, effectively converting the economy from proprietary to collaborative. That's the bigger picture. Oh, it, I, that's really interesting. So basically, once you have everybody working with this new model and sharing the, you know, you know, interacting and and, and sharing and having sort of a a different yeah. quote unquote industry relationship, then once you have that in place, you can switch out your building system to maybe something that is easier that doesn't. So, so you're starting with like a, a in, in some ways it's kind of a, a conventional building system, right? Obviously you're, you're inventing some new things to make this, to make this easier, right. but it's like, you know, it's two by four construction yep. and, and basically off the shelf products. But then once you've kind of restructured yep. how the industry, you know, or the industry or some, or some core of it, you know, goes together, then you can, then you have the freedom to sort of switch out to maybe a, a, um, a, a different technology, housing technology that they're building, you know, whatever that looks like, 3D printers or CNC yep. fabricated parts or, or whatever. I think that's really interesting. Um, 
it's it's very clever. I like the, I like the idea. This is a really neat project. Uh, I wish I had saw more of the home portion of it previously, um, and I would have been better prepared. Um, yeah. As far as the the blocks right now, like the two major challenges, one is labor, but I think with John and vets and mm -hmm. training, that's going to be solved. But for the first one, we kind of got to make the road by walking. And I, I'm trying to really mm -hmm. commit to having the first build, not trying to scrounge for people, but we've got the full team of 24 and we're doing it in mm -hmm. that time frame too, because that's part of the model. It's like the, the efficiency of build time compression by using modularity mm -hmm. and swarm builds. And then the second part yeah. is the, the part that tactically stands in the way of that is the inspection schedules, which we know we can't, if we can't do this in the shortest time because of inspections, however long it takes for the inspector to come out for perhaps five or so inspections, that's the part that we're trying to get strategic on and solve that. But that means we're gonna have to be, once we have the team, we'll be building multiple ones. And if there's a delay, okay, we need to wait for inspection. We're working on the other houses and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, yeah. So that, that's where we are right now. And the first build in a while yeah. will be about mid-year, like in around Kansas City area. Cool. Where where are you planning on build where Kansas City, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, we just found yeah, out that wondering. from one one contractor guy that it may take three days, depending on a schedule for any inspection, in which case it's like, whoa, that's like fifteen dead yeah. days at most, which is uh, yeah, okay, exactly. So might... Depending on where you're building, you're gonna have a lot of a lot of different inspections, right? Um, yeah, in which case we might, I mean, right now we said, okay, if that's Kansas City, well, uh, Missouri, well, maybe let's go to the next town over. Maybe that's, that's much easier there in terms of getting the inspector out there on time. So, so that's, that's one yeah. thing to solve. That's something that I've, I've looked at previously. I'm in, I'll be able to share more later. I'm in the very early stages of working on a project that's not exactly like this, but it's not, it's, it's, it's it's not not like this. Uh, it's it's it, it's it, mm -hmm. it's I, I sim very similar kind of I co concepts and sort of ways of, things that need to be addressed. So I will be able to talk more about that a little bit later um, when it's when I've sort of made announcements about it. Um, but yeah, so I guess the, the only other the other thing that comes to mind is a thing that I'm curious is could I could potentially see it be an issue, and I'm curious as to your addressing is not only do you have different inspections for different disciplines, right? But you also have different um, criteria for who is allowed to do what on different disciplines, right? Like your, your electrical work needs to be done by a licensed electrician, similar for kind of a lot of, a lot of other stuff. So I'm curious as to what you've, how you've thought about that. Our thought is that we, we build that skill in-house, starting with me getting mm -hmm. those licensures and then we teach people. That's part of our offering. In our apprenticeship, you can yeah. you can get this. Uh, you can get yeah. Certified. And I guess yeah, the, yeah. The tricky part is that a lot of those. Uh, and again, because I've, I'm looking at a similar effort, I've looked into it a little bit, not a ton. But a lot of them require mm -hmm. like really long apprenticeships, and you know you have had to have a, like two thousand hours of electrical apprenticeship or something before you can become a licensed electrician. So it's like there's a really large upfront cost in both time and effort. Um, you know, for some things like general, for, for like, you know, residential construction, just general contracting, that's relatively easy to get, right? You could just take a test, I think, in most states. But for things like electrical licenses and stuff like that, that's in plumbing, I think, too, are the two big ones, is it's much more upfront, burdensome upfront. It's not something that it's, it's much harder to, to just get. Is, is So that's kind of my other thing that I think would perhaps need to be figured out. Um, and it may be you the just part. have somebody in your in your group of 20 that like has those skills and then it's done under his supervision or his or her supervision. Um, but that would be another thing I think would uh, need to ma make sure it's figured out. It seems to be two levels. One is the general contractor and the other one is the actual mm -hmm. trades person. I think the mm -hmm. three like electrical plumbing and general, I think that's sound from what I saw, it sounds manageable to do that as far as getting licensed for that but as far as the licensed electrician yeah that's or plumber that's that may be different but we would negotiate mm -hmm. that like okay so say it, could i be the general contractor for electrical plumbing and general um perhaps yeah, I would, you'd have to talk with yeah it would it's uh, yeah you'd have to dive into the specifics i can't but then we say okay much. well 
Yeah. Uh, depending on how the the legal system works, but as far as I know, I don't see it. It's like the uh, inspector. In some places, the electrician may have to signs off on the work, but how we do that, we negotiate it. Like for example, we can do most of the work, and the electrician just shows up for one thing or something. Yeah, things like that. Yeah, exactly. It, it's I, yeah, I don't think it's an insurmountable problem. It's it's but it's definitely yeah. something to to be figured out. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and I think yeah, the general contractor that's much easier to do. You can, I think you literally just take a test, and then yeah, and then and then once you once you've taken a test, you can and you, and you pass it, then then you're for residential at least for other things it's more complicated. Um, right. Well, cool. I really like this project. I I think it's really interesting. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess. What yeah yeah what are your other yeah so I mean what no, what do you yeah, think I'm are curious some to hear more yeah ways to collaborate and get the greater collaborative framework so so part yeah. of this would be a like the kind of stuff you do which is writing white papers or or mm -hmm. studying okay what actually does it take to solve housing like that's we like to start mm -hmm. with that our our mission is like okay here's collaborative design for solving pressing world issues. Well, let's get mm -hmm. those people around the table for that and, and write those documents and then actually act on them. The idea here is for our campus per se, like the apprenticeship is one side, but the other part is uh, starting a more in-depth and that is like four to eight year, like basically instead of college, much uh -huh. deeper programs and you're, you're getting trained to be a movement entrepreneur. So this means sure. you're, you're doing that, which like if you're a socially conscious or a a person wants to change the world, here's this, you actually get trained for this and that's the expectation mm -hmm. for coming out of it. So on one side, uh, where's the person gonna get a job? Well, they can work with us or we you know, or we give them the entrepreneurial skills to go elsewhere. But the idea here is to, to do that, but start with the premise that we're actually teaching you, mm -hmm. okay, what are the pressing world issues and how do we solve them at the core? That's the very interesting, that's an interesting question worth solving and as we go forward, and that's that's why we want to reach out to people like yourself to to collaborate on that and define terms and say, okay, if we this is what needs to be done, and let's not worry about how we are going to do it. We'll figure that out with collaborative design. So, but the first thing is sure. to put problems on the table in, in an authentic way, sure. like not not constrained by limits. It's, we're saying like, okay, for the long term, how we how do you design this this operating system for Earth for the long term? Um, cool. I have, well, so I have a couple of thoughts. Um, so one is I just, you know, I want to, with, without making any, any, any commitments to it, but I, I would, this, I think this would be good candidate just for something to me to write about on the newsletter. It's very much in my, in the sphere of things that I'm interested in and, and care about. So I think that there's a potential for that. And then the other thing that's kind of in that vein, and this is something I haven't, announced yet and it's a different project <laughs> product that I'm working on but um, I've recently been sponsored by a sort of think tank that is interested in just solving um, progress issues broadly defined and one of the things that they're interested in is housing and, and construction and they're, they're specifically interested in potential you know white papers or you know, things that they could go and advocate for, basically. And, mm -hmm. and so I think there's also the potential for, again, you know, beyond just like a, a blog post or a newsletter issue. I, and again, I would, I'm not, I'm not, I want to be clear, I'm, I won't be able to commit to anything yet. I would want to spend more time diving into this to, to make sure I, I understand it really well. But there, 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 there could mm -hmm. also be the potential for, for, um, for, you know, yeah, like a more formal white paper that would have a specific, you know, advocacy pipeline as well, depending, you know, so I, those are the two things that I kind of come to mind in, uh, offhand. Um, yeah, take a look at the chat. This is what we have our white paper in progress on what solving housing means. This is just initial thoughts. Oh, okay. Thought about yeah, already. Yeah, let me take a look at this. So, bunch of um, the working doc, you, if you go into edit, you can actually, uh, mm -hmm. you, anyone can edit that actually, because it's meant to be a public mm -hmm. public mm -hmm. doc. 
anyone on the internet with this link can add it. Feel free to add to it or make comments. But just trying to throw down a mm. bunch of points is kind of this is first stream of consciousness. But then getting the heavy hitters involved to, to vet this and, and actually write some something much more solid. That will be definitely part of the Open Building yeah, Institute. Yeah, I think. Work, yeah, yeah, I think there's a lot of yeah potential for that, and it's something I would have to you know I, I would have to. I would have to something, you know, spend time thinking about it for it. It generally, I'm, I'm kind of a slow thinker. So it usually takes like a week or something to percolate in my head before I, <laughs> before I have uh, something, uh, clear thoughts about it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think, I think those are both, um, both interesting ideas. Yeah. So I guess, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to, yeah. Any other any other thoughts you have? But I guess for something that I'm, what I can do on on my end is just let me give some take some time um, to basically read through this material, and then I can kind of yeah. follow up with, yeah, with my great. thoughts. Yeah, beyond that, into like sort of specific things. Uh, I think kind of yeah. both the things I suggested are are potentials, and then depending on what I see, there may be other items as well. Um, yeah. And let me and and and, and depending, on, I may be able to send you a white a white paper of, of my own for some of the ideas that that I'm again that I'm kind of working on. We'll be able to pronounce shortly. That also is again informed about you know it's important to keep this stuff open. Uh, the sort of um, you know little timely fiefdoms of different construction where information is not shared really makes it harder to make progress on these sorts of things. Um, yeah, and can you address that? So yeah, those, that's kind of my, my initial thoughts. As far as the, the work and the related work, are you actually starting a business building housing or is it more on the information side? It's, it's kind of a mix. The, we have a, 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 an idea that we're kind of trying to pursue. The goal is to get sort of research organization funding with it because it's, 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 it's a little bit more speculative. It's more it's it's not it's a little bit using less off the shelf technology and more using um, machine based stuff, and then it's also the kind of idea the, the sort of organizing idea is that can you have a rather than just using direct labor can you have can you have a, a more factory based process that doesn't rely on a centralized fabric you know large expensive factory where you ship stuff from like traditional prefab is done from can you do it on a smaller scale and so i'm it's 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 it's, it's I'm, I'm very interested in like flexible manufacturing technology where you can quickly and easily fabricate stuff on a small scale that doesn't necessarily rely on a big factory so 3d printers is, is the most obvious example of that sort of thing but like cn you know portable cnc mills there's some other technology there's a thing called a join machine which i just learned about and i'm talking with the uh the designer of in uh sometime next week that is, is kind of similar, but it's, it's kind of more based on that angle of it than, than, than I think you're pursuing. But again, I, I kind of view them as, as very similar. And it's something I'll be able to kind of, again, in, in, in the next few weeks, six, six, seven weeks, hopefully I'll be able to talk more about it. Um, yeah. But yeah, for yeah, us, it's, for it's, the it's, way we're looking at, oh uh, yeah, as far as the <laughs> flexible fabrication part, uh, we, we, uh, Built. We didn't really finish it, but we were, we built a prototype of a six by six foot, so a huge, like bigger than yourself, three um, D printer. Um, so that's mm -hmm. the kind of stuff we're looking at. So your shredders and filament makers to do that from from mm -hmm. waste plastic, which I think is a good opportunity. So that's that's where we'd like to go with that, because uh, definitely initially sure. with like, stuff like trim and everything else and various parts. Even like yeah. right now we're doing uh, vinyl siding. That's something we could print as well. So things like that. Yeah, I was, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, again, yeah. Those vinyl, those like bending machines that do vinyl siding, but also like roof deck. Again, it seems like there's a potential for like welding this these different bits and pieces that kind of already exist in a way that just makes all this fabrication easier. So anyway, so there may be a way for us to collaborate on that on that end of things too, kind of more formally. Um, I'll, again, I'll, I'll share more. I'll, when I when I can, I'll, I will share more about it, and then that will it, we we can see if there's something something that makes sense. But yeah, this is a neat project, so I appreciate you guys taking the time to talk to, talk to me about it.
Um, yeah. John, what else should we say about emergent ventures? Do you have any uh, suggestions for us? Because we were going to look at applying for that. Sure. So I, I will say I got a I got a relatively small amount of money. It was just like a, a few thousand dollars. Um, I did not I did not spend very much time on, on the application. I was actually applying to another grant and then thought, um, uh, okay, well, I've already done this simple grant application. I will just I will just uh, apply for this one too. So it was very short. Uh, I, I spent maybe 15 minutes on it. Um, Tyler had apparently read some of my stuff before, so he was already a little familiar. So that may have, that may have made, made up for deficiencies in the grant, <laughs> the grant, um, the, 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 the writing of, of it that I did, but it was very informal. And then, you know, how it went was basically, he just said, Hey, I'm interested in, in chatting with you about this. We had a very, had a very, very short conversation. 15 minutes maybe and he, and he basically said okay well what if I gave you you know so and so amount of money um yeah so it was the whole thing was very informal I didn't no no not a huge amount of time was spent on it uh um at, at any stage and you know relatively small amount of money but meaningful quite meaningful in what it will it'll help me kind of bridge the gap between what I'm doing now which is you know full-time engineering work and and doing these other projects on the side to making these other projects more of my main focus, so. Do you have suggestions for us? Um, I, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, there's a. Uh, just, just to finish that thought up, we're gonna look at, so since we're de developing this apprenticeship program, we're gonna look at, okay, let's fund some mm -hmm. of the campus with it, some of the infrastructure improvements we need here. We've got a 30 acre facility where it's a, kind of our research and development facility here, uh, one hour north of Ms., uh, Kansas City, and yeah, wanted to build infrastructure to house the actual apprenticeship program. We already have some buildings and workshop and stuff like that, but we wanted to upgrade that a bit. To, so importantly, we can I, yeah. I, I just want to add also that we are currently certified by the Department of Labor for the first two-year apprenticeship. Uh, we just don't have Fine. the facilities for it yet. And so like, there's a, a institutional collaboration as well as individual collaboration happening. Gotcha. Um, I get the sense that I, I'm not an expert on it. I get the sense that a lot of the emergent ventures grants are fairly small and very tend to be somewhat individual focused. Like if you look at, if you look at the grantees, it's a whole lot of, you know, some 20 year old for like general career development. And if you, you know, read articles about it, it's a lot of like, you know, maybe they just got a few thousand dollars. So I'm not, I, I, I can't, I think they may have given like much larger grants to some other things. Um, but it's very, it's very individual focused. It's very about, it's, you know, does he think this person, as I understand it, is a good candidate for the money more than the project? So I guess in some ways, maybe it's kind of like Y Combinator um, or Startup Accelerators. Um, yeah, other than that, I can't say a ton about it. There's an article out there somewhere, I, w I could maybe send it to you if I dig it up, is that basically discusses it. That, that really kind of tries to unpack it, not written by Tyler, written by somebody else. Um, so yeah, I guess those are kind of my only, my only thoughts about it. I don't have a ton of tips. I did it. <laughs> I did it kind of last minute, almost as a, as a second thought. So I didn't end up putting a ton yeah. of time into my application. Yeah. Yeah. It's useful. It's useful information. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't have anything specific. I mean, I, I get the sense that this is the start of something. So are you in a position now yeah. where you want to schedule the next meeting? Uh, how do you want to proceed? I think, I, yeah, I think I would say, look, give me a little bit of chance to digest some of this stuff and sort of collect my thoughts. And I will kind of follow up with, okay. I, I'll just kind of a list of my things, my thoughts on kind of potential next, next steps. And then we can schedule maybe another discussion from there. How does that sound? Yeah. Works for me. Awesome. That yeah, sounds good. Okay. Well, cool. Well, I, again, I appreciate you, ta you taking the time to kind of go over this with me. I do think it is a very cool project. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Marcin, I'm going to stay on for our next one. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Well, thanks so much. Yeah, all right. Take care. Yeah, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. Mm-hmm. John, you want to uh, record this as a separate? Separate conversation? Yeah, I can do that. Actually, as a matter of fact, 
I'll just stop this one and you can hop on the next link in your calendar. Okay. Sounds All good. Right. Take care. Thanks.